Good morning, good morning. Keisha Johnston here. Welcome to Waking Early for His Glory. You can find me here every Monday through Friday at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for catching the replay. If you can be so kind and type in hashtag replay in the comments so we will know that you are watching. And if you are tuning in for the very first time, great morning, everyone. If you can type a number one in the comments so we will know that you are watching. Good morning, good morning. It is so good to see you all. Good morning, Lady Ruby. Good morning, Yolanda L. Smith. Not sure why I have to call your full name out. Good morning, Keisha Smith. Good morning, everyone. You all know what to do as you're jumping on. Let's take a moment and get the broadcast shared out. Now is a fine time to evangelize. Go ahead and get this shared into your um, community groups. Go ahead and get this shared onto your personal pages. You never know who needs to hear a word of encouragement on this very early morning. <laughs> But we are waking up early for his glory. No better way to start the day than how we start our day, right? Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, Andrea Kelly. Good morning. So again, if you are new to Waking Early for His Glory, my name is Keisha Johnson, and you can find us here Monday through Friday, 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, if you're catching the replay, go ahead and type in hashtag replay so we will know that you are watching. And if this is your first time tuning in, don't be shy. Put a number one in the comments so we can welcome you. Good morning. So good to see you all. You all know what to do. Go ahead and type in. It's a great day to be alive. Somebody say, God did it again. He has allowed us to see another day. And I am so thankful and so grateful for it. Thankful for, listen, another chance to get it right. <laughs> I know, I know, Yolanda. And the funny thing is, I don't think I ever really just call everyone by their full name and their middle initial. You all say good morning to my nephew, Seven. Go ahead and say good morning to him in the comments. Seven, that's a C-E-V-I-N. Good morning, nephew. So good to see you on here. I'm pretty sure you're about to go to bed. I'm pretty sure you're not waking up early with us. You're about to go to bed, but... <laughs> Thank you for stopping by to say hello. We are so glad you're here. All right, let's, um, my phone is up now. Here we go. Yes, it's a great day to be alive. It seems like really, really quiet in my house. Normally it's quiet this early in the morning, but it seems very, very quiet this morning. Anyway, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Make sure you grab your Bibles. Make sure you grab your journals. Um, is that good morning or is that good night for you, Seven? <laughs> Make sure you grab your water. Don't forget to grab your water. If you all don't usually drink water while we are on the broadcast, please go ahead and do that today. Grab some water. You can drink a whole glass or two or a half a bottle by the time we're done. Um, so go ahead and grab your water. Good morning, Tamiko. Good morning, Shasha. So good to see all of you. <laughs> all right, here we go. After you have shared, come back and type in hashtag shared. Um, if you have not grabbed your anointing yet, oil yet, make sure that you have your anointing oil and that you have anointed your hands every morning. My hands are oily. They are blessed. And they are anointed. So let's go ahead and type in my hands are blessed. Everything that I touch is blessed. Lady Ruby, you got it. Everything that I touch prospers. Everything I touch multiplies. Everything I touch turns to gold. Everything I touch turns to gold. These blessed hands will lay hands on the sick. They will be healed and they will recover. How do we know? Because the Bible tells us so. Amen. Amen. So yes, good morning from Greenland. So good to see you. So good to see you. That's Pauline Larson. Good to see you this morning. You all go ahead and share where you are tuning in from. I am here in Ackworth, Georgia. So go ahead and share where you are joining us from. Um, what time did you go to bed last night? What time did you wake up this morning? Went to bed somewhere in the 11 o'clock hour. Got up at 3.15. Uh, my flesh is not the boss of me, so I got up. <laughs> I got up. You know what's so funny? I was talking to someone on the phone yesterday, and I can't remember what she said, and I started laughing. She was like, oh my gosh, your laugh is the same, just how it is on waking early. 
for his glory. I said, what is my laugh like? I thought that was so cute. It's like, you sound, yes, time to get the word and exercise. Yes, I know a lot of you multitask and listen and walk. Um, so that's just amazing. Listen and walk. You can listen and make sure you grab your drink, get your water intake in for the day. Not the whole day, but at least to start the day. So that's amazing. All right, hold on. Let's see here. Let me go ahead and type this in here. All right, let's go ahead and get started. If you are on this broadcast live or if you're catching the replay, that means that you are on the wake up list and that is not a small thing. Good morning from Houston. Good morning from Trinidad. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you so much for sharing. If you shared, go ahead and type in hashtag shared. Um, if you're on this broadcast live, that means you're catching the replay. If you are on this broadcast live or if you're catching the replay, that means that you were on the wake up list is what I'm trying to say. And that's not a small thing. So let's just take a moment and begin to thank the father. So go ahead and type in at least one thing. Listen, Sharon, you were not the only one fighting this flesh this morning. I was like, flesh, you are not the boss of me. <laughs> so I got up. <laughs> All right. So, Father, we honor you. Father, we love you. Father, we bless you. Father, you are good. You are God and you are good in every way there is to be good. And we say thank you on this morning. We thank you for waking us up. We thank you for allowing us to see another day. We thank you, Father, for another chance to get it right. That's right, Sharon. We were on the wake-up list, and we say thank you. Somebody just type in thank you for everything. We thank you for everything. We thank you for being our protector. We thank you, Father, for protecting us through the night from things that we have no idea that you have protected us from. We say Thank you. Somebody just say thank you. We thank you. We thank you for waking us up with a sound mind. We thank you for waking us up with a mind this morning to want to spend time with you. We thank you for waking us up with a mind this morning to want to spend time in your word. We say thank you. Listen, y'all, remember there was a time where waking up and spending time with God, spending time in my word was not even on my mind. I was about to say the last thing on my mind wasn't even on my mind. So I'm just so thankful and so grateful that he waking us up with a mind to want to spend time <laughs> with him and to want to spend time in his word. So we thank you. Amen. So let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> If someone can type in our opening verse or verses for today, I should say, and it's coming from the book of Psalm, chapter 40, verses 1 through 3. If someone can type that in, Psalm, verse, chapter 40, verses 1 through 3. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So good to see you all. Psalm, chapter 40, verses 1 through 3. <coughs> Excuse me. Hold the line. <coughs> All right, here we go. I waited patiently for the Lord to help me, and he turned to me and heard my cry. Second, Father, I thank you. Good morning, Shonda, for hearing my cry on this morning. I waited patiently for the Lord to help me, and he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me, steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. Many will look at you and see what the Lord has done and will be amazed. Many will look and see what the Lord has done in your life and they will be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. Can I read that one more time? I need to read that one more time. I waited patiently for the Lord to help me and he turned to me and he heard my cry. Aren't you thankful that we serve a God who hears our cry? He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. 
Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. People will look at what the Lord has done. They will be amazed. People will look and see what the Lord has done and they will be astonished. Listen, sometimes I take a, I, I, I step back and I take a look at what the Lord has done and I'm amazed. <laughs> Sometimes I step back and I take a look at what the Lord has done and what the Lord is doing. And I am amazed and astonished. God is so good. And I'm excited on today. Yes, I was just about to say a new song. That's right, Sharon. Somebody say, God is putting a new song in my mouth. Somebody's song is changing this morning. We will no longer be singing the same old song. Somebody's song is changing on this morning. And I want to read our uh, devotion for today. Only believe today. Yes, Loretta, he is only believe today. Only believe today. Somebody say believe. Only believe today. Break free from the limitations that have been set before you. Do you understand that the same spirit, let's just pause and think about that for a moment. Go ahead and type that in the, in the comments. Same spirit. Do you understand that the same spirit that raised my son Jesus from the dead lives in you for the impossible lives within you. I will cause you to do all things through Christ who strengthens you when you are at your lowest point, when you are at your lowest point in your driest desert, know that I will come to rescue you. And we need to think about that and let that sink in. There have been times where I feel like I have been at my lowest point. Sometimes I've been lower than low. Like, God, this is it. I don't see a way out. I don't think I can get up. How do I even come back from this? Your lowest point and your driest desert. The Father is reminding you on today, know that I will come to your rescue. He is a faithful God and he will come to your, he has come to my rescue every single time. So I want to remind you this morning that he is a faithful God. I am willing to do more than your mind can even think or dream about. My desire is to help you. My desire, his desire is to help us. I know you like to do things on your own and may even feel like you are being bothered. But know that I am always waiting to hear your voice and act according to your needs. He's always sitting back and waiting to hear our voice. He's ready and waiting and ready to act according to our needs. He says, it breaks my heart when you are silent. It breaks my heart when you are discouraged. Let me pick you up and set you on a rewarding path as you only trust and only believe. I need somebody to say this morning, listen, yes, hashtag he will do it. Ask me how I know. I should have worn my ask me how I know shirt today. Let me pick you up and set you on a rewarding path as you only trust and believe. I need you all to say this morning, I will trust and I will believe. I will trust and I will believe. The Father says, I will be your security blanket. When all things get cold, you would stand in awe of what I can do if you just let me. Have faith and know that I am God. Have faith and know am I that I am God. And what stood out to me as I was reading this yesterday and meditating on it, he said, you would stand in awe of what I can do if you would just let me. God is a gentleman. He is not going to force himself on anyone, you know. And um, just a little rabbit trail here. Because of the things that I've gone through with like men, starting from the father, the stepfather, you know, the uncle, cousins, you know, all the men in my life from a very early age, you know, the, the different kinds of abuse. I had a hard time trusting God because I could not trust my earthly fathers and I couldn't trust the earthly men in my life. 
I had a hard time trusting God and I had a hard time letting him just be God in my life. You know what he does, just doing what he does best and that's taking care of things because when we put our hands on things and we try to take care of things ourselves, we make a mess. But listen, God is faithful every time to clean up our mess. So I had a hard time just trusting and believing and allow him to be God. And he is such a gentleman. He is not going to force himself on anyone. So he's saying you will stand in awe of what I can do if you would just let me. And listen, that's a word for somebody this morning. Just let him. Just let God be God in your life. That's right. Just let go. Just let go and let God. Listen, y'all just put, just put your hands up right now and say, I let go. I let go. I remember having to get to that place where I'm like, that's it. I'm done. I surrender. I let go. I'm just going to let you be God because I'm trying to be God, lowercase g, and I'm making a mess. And I'm making a mess. And then you make a mess and you're like, help, every single time. But what I love about him is that he comes and he cleans up the mess every single time time <laughs> every single time so i need you all to say this morning i am just going to let go i am going to trust and believe that god wants the best for me and i'm just going to let go and let god be god in my life and just let go and let him do what he does best and that is be god he does not need our help i had to learn that god does not need my help <laughs> god does not need your help. And a lot of times we are just like a gnat in his face. He's trying to do what he does best. Good morning. And we're just a gnat in God's face. I need you all to say, I'm just going to let go and let God be God. I'm just going to let go and let him do what he does best. What he does best. He says, I will cause you to do all things through Christ who strengthens you. When you are at your lowest point and at your driest desert, know that I will come to rescue you. Your lowest point is not low compared to what I have seen and witnessed. And if that is you right now, you feel like you are at your lowest point and you feel like you are at your driest desert. Trust me, I have been there. And I know what it feels like. <laughs> I have been there. Just know that God is still there. And listen, there's no better place to be than at the end of your rope. Hashtag ask me how I know. There's no better place to be than at the end of your rope. Because that's when we're the most willing to just... I'm at the end of my rope. I don't know where else to go. I don't know what else to do. There's no better place to be than at the end of your rope. And so I'm excited this morning. I am excited. <coughs> and I just want to say congratulations. Y'all go ahead and just type it in the comments. What are we saying congratulations for? Because we are about to sing a new song. And I want to read this again. I waited patiently for the Lord to help me, and he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair. And listen, every single time I read this verse, I cannot read it without thinking and just putting myself there and just seeing God lifting me up, lifting me up out of the pit of despair, lifting me up out of the mud and the clay and setting me on a solid ground every time then I just begin to worship like God I thank you he set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along he has given me a new song so y'all go ahead and say congratulations you are about to sing a new song he has given me a new song to sing a hymn of praise to our God many will see what he has done and be amazed they will put their trust in the lord i absolutely love these three verses i absolutely love them i remember there was a time where i just would just meditate it on it and just read it and reread it that's right congratulations we are about to sing 
a new song. The Lord is putting a new song in our mouth. I'm about to sing a new song. Say some, y'all type congratulations in the comments. <laughs> and so even verse three, many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. Y'all have no idea. Listen, I feel like I need to write a book. If I knew how to write a book, I would have written a book by now. I feel like I need to write a book. And if, um, and just thinking back <laughs> on my life and just thinking where the Lord has brought me from. And there are people that have seen me now and they're just like, oh my, there must be a God. And they are amazed at what the Lord has done. And it ended with, they will put their trust in the Lord. I don't know how many have, people have said, I might not have believed there was a God before, but simply because I see where the Lord has brought you from, there must be a God and have been open to hear more about this God who has moved so mightily in my life. They will be astonished. They will look and many will see what God has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. They will put their trust in the Lord. Let me tell you all, God is so faithful. God is so faithful. I, I Yeah, I, after I said, Nikki, after I said that, I'm like, I really can. Not if I knew how. I, I, I really could. I really can. Look, we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength, right? Um, yeah. And, and, and there have been many times where I sat down, um, rabbit trail, to try to write. Like, I have it on my computer. And I sat down, and then I would tell myself, I can't do this. You know, the lies we tell ourselves, right? The lies we tell. Um, like, I can't do this. I'm not a writer. I can't write a book. I can't do this. The lies we tell ourselves, right? And so I show up telling you all, you know, to watch your words. And, yeah, I need to do the same thing, especially when it comes to writing this book. Because we, you know, all we tell ourselves all kind of lies, the things we can and can't do. But he says right here, <laughs> I will cause you to do all things through Christ who strengthens you. I will cause you to do all things. Let's see. Keisha says, my mom reconnected with God. Yep. Listen. Yes. Yes. That's why it's so important for us to just allow God to be God and do what he wants to do in us and through us. Because people will look at us and be amazed they will look at what the lord has done and be astonished and they will put their trust in him hashtag ask me how i know and my brother is one of them and now he's always calling me sis can i get some body butter sis can i get some more of them vitamins i'm running low you know and just you know more open to talk not just about getting things and then listen I'm like, oh, I, what you need? What you need? I got you, brother. I'll send it to you. He's like, no, 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 no. Give me a cash out. Give me, give me. You know, he won't take anything <laughs> without paying for it. But anyway, all that to say, I see he he's even more open. You know, like, okay, my, I might want to hear a little bit about, what's, let me hear a little bit about this guy. Because listen, I'm looking at you right, listen, there must be a God. There must be a God. All right, so listen, I, that's all I had today. I didn't have a whole lot today, and I don't like to add or say anything that the Lord has given me, so I wouldn't even say that we really have a lesson today, but I pray that this, even this alone, has encouraged you, and I just want to say congratulations. Get excited. You are about to sing a new, listen, yes, Jesus did it all. You are about to sing a new song. You're about to sing, yes, to God be the glory. Absolutely. You know, because listen, I would say, you know, I feel like I, I can sit here and say I'm the only one in my family where I feel like I made it out, right? I have one sister who didn't, you know, she's not here because of everything that went on, you know, just some really traumatic things. And she did some crazy things. And one day we got that phone call without going into this long story one day you know we got the phone call that she's no longer with us you know and then um my brother went down the wrong trail i have another sister who went down the wrong trail and now she's dealing with you know all kind of illnesses um and just you know 
so many family members that ended up on drugs and alcohol. And I just thank God. I just thank God that I wasn't, you know, I just thank God that that's not my story. I just thank God that 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 right there, you know, but here's the thing, though. But here's the thing. While I didn't turn to things like drugs and alcohol, many of you that have been following me, right, I turned to things like anger turn to things like rage, turn to things like overspending, you know, and different things like that. Those were my coping mechanisms, you know, but I'm just so thankful and so grateful to God for, you know, him just being so faithful and just being who he is and us being God, you know. And so now my brother is, you know, brother is more open, you know, he's more open. He's more open. Little rabbit trail. Listen. Cause there were times where I didn't, I, I didn't think I was gonna make it out. Like God, like I, I would ask him things like, "What am I? What am? What on earth am I even here for? Why am I even here? You, you brought me into this world to go through this." And I remember just being so angry, just being so angry, just so being so angry and offended, and just, you know, like this, what is this, you know? And so I can just look back. And I'm like, it all makes sense. I get it. I understand, you know? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's it. So I'm gonna, about to read our um, declarations. And then we're going to move on to listening to um, the One Year Bible. Y'all, God is so faithful. He is amazing. He is so amazing. I'm just so thankful and so grateful to even be sitting here right now, you know? Mm. All right. Yeah, y'all go ahead and share your takeaways. Share um, what is something that stood out to you today or what is one thing that you will do differently because of what you heard. Um, and you know what to do when I read these decorations. If you receive it, type I receive it. And then we're going to listen to the One Year Bible. Um, God is so incredibly faithful, y'all. So incredibly faithful. I decree and declare that the song of the Lord will be sung through my worship. Listen. <laughs> I decree and declare that the song of the Lord, God is so good. He is so good. He is so good. And I can look back and say, now I understand why I went through all of that. Now I understand because he's sending so many people my way. And I'm able to say, you know what? I've been through that. I've been through that. I've been there. I understand how you feel. But let me tell you what the Lord has done. <laughs> but let me tell you what the Lord has done. But let me tell you what the Lord has done. I know that's how you're feeling right now. I know you may not see a way out, <laughs> but let me tell you, God is faithful. And let me tell you what the Lord has done. I decree and declare that the song of the Lord will be sung through my worship. I decree and declare that the harmony of heaven is being released in my praise. That's right. Hold on. Hold on. Somebody say, I will. I hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Do not give up. I decree and declare that the word of God gives me a sure foundation to stand on. He has and is still. Yes. Yes. I decree and declare that the spirit of God will lead me to my place of success. I decree and declare that I am marching to the beat of God's drum. I decree and declare that I am marching to the beat of God's drum. I decree and declare that I am walking in my divine calling and mandate. That's right. You'll say, I'm holding on. Let me read these again. I decree and declare that the song of the Lord will be sung through my worship. I decree and declare that the harmony of heaven is being released in my praise. I decree and declare that the word of God gives me a sure foundation to stand on. I decree and declare that the spirit of God will lead me to my place of success. I decree and declare that I am marching to the beat of God's drum. And I decree and declare that I am walking in my divine calling and mandate. 
So, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that according to Job 22 and 28, you said we shall decree a thing and we shall declare a thing and it shall be established. So, Father, we thank you that as we have made these declarations in our lives, they are being established in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all go ahead and type in, I receive it. So if you are new to the broadcast, we are so glad you are here. Um, we are about to go into the second half of our broadcast. Um, many of us are reading through the One Year Bible together, and lately we have been listening to the One Year Bible. Um, so I pray that you have 20 minutes. Y'all go ahead and type in hashtag 20 minutes, that you have 20 minutes to stick around and listen to the Word of God with us. We're going to listen to a portion of the Old Testament, a portion of the New Testament, a small portion of Psalm and Proverbs, and we're going to hear about one of my favorite stories today, David and Goliath. Um, so I'm super excited. So um, someone type in audio dot one year Bible online for me, audio dot one year Bible online, and I'm going to pull it up on my phone. Good morning, Darice. Perfect timing. We are just about to listen to the one year Bible. So if you have not shared the broadcast, now is a fine time to share as we are about to listen to the Word of God. I think this has become my favorite part of um, Waking Early for His Glory. You all, God is so faithful. I just want to remind you today to hold on. Do not give up. Hold on. All right, here we go. If the sound is good, type a number two. God is so good. Our reading in the Old Testament today will be from the book of First Samuel, so good. chapter 17, verse 1. Is the sound through chapter the volume 18, good? verse 4, where we'll read about opportunities. Like the God had prepared David for this occasion. For the private victories make possible the public victories. A seemingly trivial errand led to a challenging situation. Is the volume that brought okay? Glory to God and recognition to David. I'm Be prepared. You never know when your opportunity will come. It was one of our presidents, Abraham Lincoln, who said, I prepared myself for great things. So when Good great morning, things came, everyone. I was Good ready. Morning. Saul was losing strength, but David was growing in power. And it's Saul's diminishment would continue until Saul's tragic death. Saul stood head and shoulders above everybody else, but he was not big enough to meet Goliath. David was a man of faith, and God gave him spiritual stature. Great faith makes great men and women. David's only desire was to glorify the God of Israel. And we'll read about obstacles. You know, whenever you step out by faith, other people will often put obstacles in your way. Mm. David's brother ridiculed him, and Saul bluntly told David, You are not able. Then Saul said, if you must do it, do it my way. And he encumbered David with his heavy armor. David had to ignore the obstacles and keep his faith in the Lord. He had to do God's work in the way God wanted him and prepared him to do it. Now David is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ, the son of David. He was born in Bethlehem and misunderstood by his family. He was an obedient son and a conquering hero. The name David means beloved, and Jesus is the Father's beloved son. David was anointed king long before he mm -hmm. took the throne and ruled, and our Lord is king of kings, even though he is not yet reigning on this earth. Like David, our Lord has had to experience rejection and exile before reigning. And with that, <coughs> let's begin today's reading in the Old Testament. Excuse me. May 15th, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 1, through chapter 18, verse 4. The Philistines now muster their army for battle and camped between Soko in Judah and Azekah at Ephaz Damim. Saul countered by gathering his troops near the valley of Elah. So the Philistines and Israelites faced each other on opposite hills with the valley between them. Then Goliath a Philistine champion from Gath came out of the Philistine ranks to face the forces of Israel. He was a giant of a man, measuring over nine feet tall. He wore a bronze helmet and a coat of mail that weighed 125 pounds. He also wore bronze leggings, and he slung a bronze javelin over his back. 
The shaft of his spear was as heavy and thick as a weaver's beam, mm -hmm. tipped with an iron spearhead that weighed 15 pounds. An armor bearer walked ahead of him carrying a huge shield. Goliath stood and shouted across to the Israelites, Do you need a whole army to settle this? Choose someone to fight for you, and I will represent the Philistines. We will settle this dispute in single combat. If your man is able to kill me, then we will be your slaves. But if I kill him, you will be our slaves. I defy the armies of Israel. Send me a man who will fight with me. When Saul and the Israelites heard this, they were terrified and deeply shaken. Now David was the son of a man named Jesse, an Ephrathite from Bethlehem in the land of Judah. Jesse was an old man at that time, and he had eight sons in all. Jesse's three oldest sons, Eliab, Abinadab, and Shammah, had already joined Saul's army to fight the Philistines. David was the youngest of Jesse's sons. Since David's three oldest brothers were in the army, they stayed with Saul's forces all the time. But David went back and forth between working for Saul and helping his father with the sheep in Bethlehem. For 40 days, twice a day, morning and evening, the Philistine giant strutted in front of the Israelite army. One day, Jesse said to David, Take this half bushel of roasted grain and these ten loaves of bread to your brothers and give these ten cuts of cheese to their captain. See how your brothers are getting along and bring me back a letter from them. David's brothers were with Saul and the Israelite army at the Valley of Elah fighting against the Philistines. So David left the sheep with another shepherd and set out early the next morning with the gifts. He arrived at the outskirts of the camp just as the Israelite army was leaving for the battlefield with shouts and battle cries. Soon the Israelite and Philistine forces stood facing each other, army against army. David left his things with the keeper of supplies and hurried out to the ranks to greet his brothers. As he was talking with them, he saw Goliath, the champion from Gath, coming out from the Philistine ranks, shouting his challenge to the army of Israel. As soon as the Israelite army saw him, they began to run away in fright. Have you seen the giant? The men were asking. He comes out each day to challenge Israel. And have you heard about the huge reward the king has offered to anyone who kills him? The king will give him one of his daughters for a wife, and his whole family will be exempted from paying taxes. David talked to some others standing there to verify the report. What will a man get for killing this Philistine and putting an end to his abuse of Israel, he asked them. Who is this pagan Philistine anyway that he is allowed to defy the armies of the living God? Exactly. And David received the same reply as before. What you have been hearing is true. That is the reward for killing the giant. But when David's oldest brother, Eliab, heard David talking to the men, he was angry. What are you doing around here anyway, he demanded. What about those few sheep you're supposed to be taking care of? I know about your pride and dishonesty. You just want to see the battle. What have I done now, David replied. I was only asking a question. He walked over to some others and asked them the same thing and received the same answer. Then David's question was reported to King Saul, and the king sent for him. Don't worry about a thing, David told Saul. I'll go fight this Philistine. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There is no way you can go against this Philistine. You are only a boy, and he has been in the army since he was a boy. But David persisted. I've been taking care of my father's sheep, he said. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and take the lamb from its right mouth. Right out of the mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too, Come for he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who saved me from the claws of the lion and the bear will save me from this Philistine. Saul finally consented. All right, go ahead, he said, and may the Lord be with you. Then Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet and a coat of mail. David put it on, strapped the sword over it, and took a step or two to see what it was like, for he had never worn such things before. 
I can't go in these, he protested. I'm not used to them. So he took them off again. He picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them in his shepherd's bag. Then, armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across to fight Goliath. Goliath walked out toward David with a shield bearer ahead of him, sneering in contempt at this ruddy-faced boy. Am I a dog? He roared at David. That you come at me with a stick? <laughs> and he cursed David by the names of his gods. Come over here, and I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals, Goliath yelled. David shouted in reply. You come to me with sword, spear, and javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today the Thank Lord you. will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head. And then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And everyone will know that the Lord does not need weapons to rescue his people. Mm -hmm. It is his battle, not ours. The Lord will give you to us. As Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him. Reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone, he hurled it from his sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in, and Goliath stumbled and fell face downward to the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine giant with only a stone and sling. And since he had no sword, he ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from its sheath. David used it to kill the giant and cut off his head. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they turned and ran. Then the Israelites gave a great shout of triumph and rushed after the Philistines, chasing them as far as Gath and the gates of Ekron. The bodies of the dead and wounded Philistines were strewn all along the road from Shaharim as far as Gath and Ekron. Then the Israelite army returned and plundered the deserted Philistine camp. David took Goliath's head to Jerusalem, but he stored the Philistines' armor in his own tent. As Saul watched David go out to fight Goliath, he asked Abner, the general of his army, Abner, whose son is he? I really don't know. Abner said. Well, find out, the king told him. After David had killed Goliath, Abner brought him to Saul with the Philistine's head still in his hand. Tell me about your father, my boy, Saul said. And David replied, His name is Jesse, and we live in Bethlehem. After David had finished talking with Saul, he met Jonathan, the king's son. There was an immediate bond of love between them and they became the best of friends. From that day on, Saul kept David with him at the palace and wouldn't let him return home. And Jonathan made a special vow to be David's friend, and he sealed the pact by giving him his robe, tunic, sword, bow, and belt. May 15th. And now as we turn our attention to the New Testament, We'll be reading today from the book of John, chapter 8, verses 21 through 30. We'll read about condemnation in John, chapter 8. The woman was guilty, as we'll see, but where was the man? Talking here about the woman caught in the act of adultery. Both of them deserved to die. It was a trap, and Jesus knew it. But he ended up trapping the trappers. Trap Did he the ride trappers. on the ground to remind them that he had written the law? Or perhaps expose their sin? Well, here's our wonderful assurance. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And we'll read about illumination. The religious leaders did not know where they were going or where he was going because they were in the dark spiritually. Completely blind. They had the light of the law and of conscience, but they did not have the light of life. Consequently, they did not know the Father or understand what Jesus taught them. And then we'll read about liberation. The people were in bondage to Rome and to the law of Moses. Yet they Trap said the they were free. Yes. In verse 35, Jesus may have been referring to Isaac and Ishmael, since the Jews had mentioned Abraham. The Son makes you free. So trust him and follow him. His truth makes you free. 
So study it, believe it, and obey it. Satan imposes slavery that seems like freedom. Jesus gives you a yoke that sets you free. Now, there is no record that Jesus ever called the publicans and sinners children of the devil. He reserved that title for the hypocritical Pharisees. By nature, we are all children of wrath, as described in Scripture. And by choice, we become children of disobedience. When you receive Jesus Christ, however, you become a child of God. But if you reject Christ and have a false righteousness, you're in danger of becoming a child of the devil, for Satan is an imitator. If yes, Satan becomes your father, hell will be your home. If Jesus is your Lord, heaven will be your eternal destiny. And with that, let's begin today's reading in the New Testament. May 15th, John chapter 8, verses 21 through 30. Later, Jesus said to them, the Jewish leaders, again, I am going away. You will search for me and die in your sin. You cannot come where I am going. The Jewish leaders asked, is he planning to commit suicide? What does he mean? You cannot come where I am going. Then he said to them, you are from below. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not. That is why I said that you will die in your sins. For unless you believe that I am who I say I am, you will die in your sins. Tell us who you are, they demanded. Jesus replied, I am the one I have always claimed to be. I have much to say about you and much to condemn, but I won't. For I say only what I have heard from the one who sent me, and he is true. But they still didn't understand that he was talking to them about his father. So Jesus said, When you have lifted up the Son of Man on the cross, then you will realize that I am he, and that I do nothing of my own, but I speak what the Father taught me, and the one who sent me is with me. He has not deserted me, for I always do those things that are pleasing to him. Then many who heard him say these things believed in him. Today we're reading Psalm 111, verses 1 through 10. Now Psalm 111 is for people who study because it explains how to be a student who pleases the Lord and grows an understanding of truth. We start with worship. The lower you bow before the Lord, the more he will instruct you. Go right to the source. Mm -hmm. Amen. We'll see God in his works in Psalm 111. Whether it's uh, science or history, you're examining God's works in this world. His works are great and glorious, revealing his power and wisdom. To see the creation but ignore the creator is to move into idolatry and sin. Mm -hmm. It was Thomas Akempis who wrote, All men naturally desire to know, but what does knowledge avail without the fear of God? We'll see God in his word. The word of God and the book of nature do not contradict each other, for the same author, capital A, wrote them. The theories of scholars come and go. But God's word stands forever. Mm -hmm. Amen. So obey what God teaches you. The search into truth is not simply an academic endeavor of the mind. It must involve your whole person. If you're willing to do God's truth, he will teach mm -hmm. you. F.W. Robertson said, obedience is the organ of spiritual knowledge. And of course, all truth is God's truth. If you love truth, learn truth and live truth. Well, then, the truth will set you free. Psalm 111, verses 1 through 10. Praise the Lord. I will thank the Lord with all my heart as I meet with his godly people. How amazing are the deeds of the Lord. All who delight in him should ponder them. Everything he does reveals his glory and majesty. His righteousness never fails. Who can forget the wonders he performs? How gracious and merciful is our Lord. He gives food to those who trust him. He always remembers his covenant. He has shown his great power to his people by giving them the lands of other nations. All he does is just and good, and all his commandments are trustworthy. They are forever true. 
to be obeyed faithfully and with integrity. He has paid a full ransom for his people. He has guaranteed his covenant with them forever. What a holy, awe-inspiring name he has. Reverence for the Lord is the foundation of true wisdom. The rewards of wisdom come to all who obey him. Praise his name forever. Amen. Proverbs 15, verse 11. Even the depths of death and destruction are known by the Lord. How much more does he know the human heart? Amen. That's it. So, Father, we thank you for the reading of your word on today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your holy word. We thank you for your word that leads us. We thank you for your word that guides us. And we thank you, Father, for your word that protects us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So, anyone want to share a takeaway or your verse that stood out to you today? Um, we have a few minutes. Oh, we finished a little bit earlier today. So, we have a few minutes before we have to go. Um, so let everybody say amen. Type in hashtag amen. Yes, when your Bible reading done. So your verse was Psalm 111 10. 111 10. Yes, fear the Lord is the foundation of true wisdom. All who obey his commandments will grow in wisdom. So what you all can do is um, it's great that we read the word and listen to the word. So yesterday I posted the um, the spec Bible study method on my page where you can kind of dig in. So what you can do each day is pick one verse or two verses to meditate on and dig deeper. And when I first started um, reading the one-year Bible and doing that, and I didn't know really what verse stood out to me, I would always use the key verse. Every day, if you have the one-year Bible, there's always a key verse that's highlighted. And I started in just using that key verse, all right? And so today's key verse, if you do not have the Bible, is um, 1 Samuel, if someone can type this in for me, 1 Samuel 18, verses 3 and 4. Those are the key verses today. 1 Samuel 18, verses 3 and 4. If someone can type that in for me, 1 Samuel 18, verses 3 and 4. And I'll go ahead and repost um, the spec Bible study method again. If you all are not following the, um, the Waking Early for His Glory page, there's an actual page. I don't go live on that page, but the page is there because when I share things, I share it to that page because it's, e it's easier to find it. So it's there on that page. Um, and so I posted it yesterday. Oh, you can't see that. So I posted it yesterday. And so basically the spec Bible study method S stands for um, the scripture. Um, P is for um, S is for no, that's the soap. Let's start over. S is for sin. Is there a sin to confess, confess and avoid? This is a spec Bible study method. Sorry, I was sh sharing the soap. Um, and P is, is there a, ver a promise in this verse to keep? E is, is there an example in this verse to follow? C is, is there a command in this verse for me to obey? K is the knowledge of God. What does this passage tell me about God or about Jesus or about Holy Spirit? So you can use this verse and kind of just go through this spec Bible study method and it kind of helps you to dig in a little bit deeper. So I'm going to share it from the Waking Early for His Glory page onto my page and you can just download it to your phone. That way you can come back to the day's reading and kind of meditate a little bit more. Shanita said, just like David, we all have listen. Yes, 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 yes. Many of us can say we have some giants in our lives, you know, and all the giants are coming down. Somebody say they are coming down. All of the giants are coming down today. All right. Good morning, Valerie. So that's it. All right. So you all are amazing. You have a wonderful weekend. I will see you all on Monday. If you have not shared the broadcast, go ahead and share it. You never know who wants to watch the replay. Um, and just kind of be encouraged today. And who wants to listen to the word? Yes, say the giants are coming down. They're coming down. Um, and then for those of you that ordered your body butter and stuff, I have more orders going out. Um, someone, I think it was Angela, did like it took it took forever for her to get her package. And then I'm waiting for 
stuff to come in. I don't know what's going on with the mail. Um, so I'm waiting for some stuff to come in for those of you that have been asking about the lip balm. All right. Yes, all of the giants are coming down. Mm -hmm. They are coming down. What time is it? Anthony's alarm clock is going to be going off in five minutes. You're working this weekend. Oh, you have a wonderful weekend. Praise the Lord. Thankful to have a job, right? Martha, it was so good to see you today. So good to see you this morning. That's right. The giants are coming down. And then if you all want to get your Nutriverse, your liquid vitamins, I have a few more here on hand. I think I have three over there. Or you can order it from my website for those of you that messaged me. And I saw some messages this morning. I just didn't go through them. I wait until after the broadcast to read the messages. So I'll go and respond to those after the broadcast. Um, and that's it. So y'all have a wonderful weekend. Did yours go out yet? Did yours, your what, which, what, what, Yolanda? I don't, I don't know who's what orders I get. I, everything is out <laughs> except for the new stuff I have to make. <laughs> Are you talking, unless you're talking about the cup. If you're talking about the cup that did not go out, those were still pre-ordered. Yeah, those were pre-ordered. What's my website? Um, I will post it in the, in the comments. It's a long website, so I'll post it in the comments. Gwendolyn. I'll post it in the comments. I'll write it down so I don't forget. I'll post it in the comments. Such a long website. Thanks for sharing. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. All right, you guys have a great weekend. And your your Nutriverse went out yesterday. Your Nutriverse went out yesterday. What's Nutriverse? The liquid vitamins I take every single day. Mm -hmm. All right, you all gotta go. Um, today is uh, what cup? The walking, the waking early, the walking for his glory cup. That's what my pen is, walking for his glory. Um, yes. <laughs> Any questions? I have to go back. I know, I see I missed some of your comments. So today is Friday. So I'll be live at 1.30 for the next chapter in our book study. Yes, I was just saying that, Shanita. Um, I'll be live at 1.30 for the next chapter in our book study. I think, are we on chapter 5 or chapter 6? One of those chapters. And so, yes, I will be live today. Yes, we are. I told the kids we're not going anywhere. We are going to be home today at 1.30. <laughs> I can't remember what happened last week. Sorry about that. All right, bye, y'all. Oh, love you too, Cheryl. Love you too. Yeah, so then I get to take a break Saturday and Sunday. Sometimes I feel bad where I'm like, whew, after the second broadcast on Friday, I'm like, praise the Lord. <laughs> I can take a break until Monday. Not saying I don't like seeing you all, <laughs> but sometimes I need a break. So usually Saturday and Sunday is, is good to kind of, <laughs> I don't study. I don't have to do anything to get prepared for anything really, kind of, sort of. Over the weekend, not saying I don't read my one-year Bible, but I can just read for myself. <laughs> yeah, so. Mm -hmm. So it's always good. A nice break on Saturday and Sunday. Not that I'm not busy, but still, it's a different kind of busy. <laughs> you listen to your audio Bible after you get out of church online. Awesome. Mm -hmm. mm, all right, let's see. All right, it's 529, Anthony's alarm clock about to go off. So I love you all, and I will see you. Yes, yep, got to rest. I try to do that over the weekend, although it's not really, really rest. <laughs> but I'm not going live, so it is a, I do, it is a, it, it's rest. <laughs> I'll just say that. All right, bye, y'all. Have a great day, and I'll see you all at 1.30 for those of you that are going to join me at 1.30 for the book study. Bye, y'all. Mm.